everything. Yeah. So, um, good. welcome back to the Light Leadership Series. It's your boy, K. Sloan. I am here with an amazing person, a very, very uh, powerful woman mentally, y'all. I'm bringing y'all somebody that got her mind together. She has uh, come by my school. I'm a teacher. She's come by, spoke life into my young ladies uh, and a woman empowerment um, opportunities. She has uh, done so also in community outreach opportunities. Uh, she is currently in Seattle, right? Yep, I'm in Seattle yep. temporarily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in Seattle. She's an entrepreneur. Um, she got her business, Hippie Mermaid. She also has a, a group, a Queen Posse, that is uh, empowering women as well. Very strong, smart, bright woman that's coming to bring a lot of energy and I'll let her introduce herself to y'all today. Thank you. I think you, you did it. You said everything. Um, oh, <laughs> um, I am super excited to be on here. Uh, like you said, I, I call myself a serial entrepreneur. Um, I do, I have a podcast, a woman empowerment podcast called Bossy Queens Podcast. podcast. Um, Hippie Mermaids. I make my own hand poured candles and sell them in sage and crystals and I have Queen Posse with my best friend, which is a business and a nonprofit for women empowerment and an advocate for women in speech and speaking. So um, definitely looking forward to having this conversation and networking with anybody that wants to network after hearing this conversation as well. You got to let them know your name now. You can't forget about yes. your name. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shade. <laughs> Shade. <laughs> Shade. Shade Valentine. Um, yeah. On my social medias, it'll be Shade.Renee. So definitely follow me. Let's have conversations, but I'm ready. I'm excited. Yeah, and you got to have me on the podcast. Now, I know it's for the bossy women, but you know what I'm saying? Let a brother slide up in there. You know, I keep I'm, telling you, know, you it's your second time. Me, ever since you told me, I decided I am going to do an episode with some guys because I want to make it a little a little different, you know? So Let, let, let us let us speak some life too now because, you know what I'm saying? We got we got some perspectives. I think, I think, yeah. and I also think that, I told you this before, I think it's beneficial that women and men have open conversation and communication mm -hmm. over a forum like this, over platforms, so that we get understanding. Because yeah. there's so much disconnect between us, so much. I agree. I think open dialogue is very important and it shows your maturity, if you can have that with uh, the other person. I remember my dad once told me that uh, guys are like mechanics and women are like scientists or chemists. Oh. Um, women, we we drive off of the chemistry, emotions, feelings, and guys are just so mechanic, like, you know, take that and take it. But it, it made me think from a young age, like, okay, that's why there could be one situation and the male and the female have two totally different perspectives because we are wired completely different, so... Definitely yeah. want to get you on for some dialogue. Yeah, yeah, some mechanical dialogue. <laughs> hey, that's... some mechanical dialogue. <laughs> hey, no, real talk though. That's I'm gonna like see this. This is why I brought her here, y'all, because she got a lot of those. I still remember the one when you said either by will or by skill. When you said that, I, I ain't let that go. I ain't let that go yet. That was still yeah. in my spirit. But all right, boom. So let's get into it. So like. What I really wanted to talk about today um, is just, you know, for the Light Leadership Series, what I normally do is when I have our host on, they, they kind of share from their own perspectives, you know, how they, they are attacking life, uh, to attacking success, maybe dealt with failures, dealt with loss, dealt with grief, deal with, you know, the, the everything that life encompasses. Um, how exactly are we, you know what I'm saying, you and I, we're going to break it down for people just attacking the success that we are looking for in life because you know everybody says they want success but that looks so different depending on, yeah it's like some people's mm -hmm. success is just being a stay-at-home mom you know raising up good kids and being able to have everything you want some people is, is being able to have millions of dollars as a man and, and, and you know making sure that everybody knows that they on top of the hill like you know everybody yeah. sees yeah. things through their own perspective so what's what's your attack at success uh, what's that strategy so for me, I got kind of like a little story behind it. So I'm going to kind of start with that and break it down for everybody. Um, so for me, I previously worked for this really big company, keep their name out of it, <laughs> for eight years. And um, I was unexpectedly let go. And what I would say was the most like unsettling way for me um, I worked seven years, right, for this certain position, and I finally got it February of last year. And as soon as I got it, 
I hated it. I hated the management. I hated that I was the youngest person out of 12 managers um, that was very successful as a top manager in sales in the nation, but I never got that acknowledgement. But there was one other manager in particular that I was always head and head with who happened to be a white male. And when that white male beat me, those months he would beat me, everyone's like, yo, good job. Hey, congratulations. We had a chain of emails and everybody was just like, yo, you did it. But when, when I ended number one, it was crickets. No one sent me emails. No one said, hey, congratulations. And it was really baffling to me because my boss and my boss's boss are both black women. And so it kind of to me was like a slap in the face. Like, okay, I am working so hard for this company. I, I have climbed this ladder and I'm still not getting that appreciation. Um, so with that, I think my work life was really miserable and I really manifested the life that I'm living right now. I manifested to, and I prayed for change to do something that I really want to do. And, um, I got let go January. So about six months ago. And honestly, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me because I have had multiple businesses on standby that were able to go to an overdrive immediately. And they've been very successful ever since. Um, so for me, I think, I have this ambition, this ambitious lion inside of me. And when I have those days where I don't want to make content, when I have those days where I don't feel like getting out of bed to go make a reel or get on TikTok, you know what I mean? Or make a, a podcast video. I think about those days where I was miserable putting in a thousand percent. So if I can go put in a thousand percent for somebody else that's getting paid off of me, why can I not put in a thousand percent for myself? So that's really how I attacked every single day. Um, my best friend gave me a tip for a weekly planner. So I have a weekly planner. I do it every Sunday, every Monday usually. I plan on my whole day, seven o'clock, wake up, 7.30, yoga, eight o'clock, breakfast. I plan out my entire day and I check that off and it does help you feel extremely accomplished as well. And it keeps you focused, especially if you're a full-time entrepreneur. Um, so I wake up every day with that fighter mentality, ready to be successful. I speak success onto my life because I am successful, right? We want to make sure we are manifesting that. Um, and I surround myself around success and successful people. Um, not everyone to me has that hungry, ambitious entrepreneur inside of them, right? And I know you're probably like, wait, I feel like I got it. No, you right, probably no, you, have, right, <laughs> you have right. the, the drive to be, to start a business. You are, you are intrigued to start a business. Not to say that you want to be successful, but to me, there are people who are born with this entrepreneur spirit. And, and so I think that in combination with what I went through is really my attack every day. Like I'm hungry. I'm out here like, I'm on Eric Thomas level. I'm like, okay, I can't sleep because I ain't at the top yet. Like, right. you know, everybody, y'all worried about what y'all doing this summer. I'm worried about this business. Like, let's right. go. So that's really how I attacked every day with just being successful. Right. And, and, and um, so I guess piggybacking off of what you just said, you know, you're talking about that hunger, that drive, and then like moving into going from I'm in my story and I'm seeing the inequity. I'm seeing the, the 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 situation not being what I want it to be. I get dropped out of the situation, you know. God maybe drop drops me out, and now yeah. I'm sitting there like, okay, let me figure out like what's gonna be next, and then things go great, like you know, off the rip, right? Yeah. So the sustainability, like what I want to speak to with when it comes to that is like when I first started doing what I'm doing with Be Alive, right? Because I still have my full-time job. I'm a teacher, happy, you know what I'm saying? Happily employed. I enjoyed my job. We're at my former high school. Shout out to them. Hey, um, let's shout out to that. Yeah, shout out to Harker Heights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full-time job is... Successful. Yeah. Yes. It's a lot, but you know, I think that, you know, you got to talk about sustainability and self-preservation, right? So yeah. this is something I've struggled with. And this is why I got you on here because, you know, when talking about that, how do we keep that energy going? Like for me, nutrition has been one of my keys to success. You know what I'm saying? My strategy, right? That's the, that's at the forefront of my strategy. Nutrition, my faith base, and my, my communication with my network, right? Right. I got the ability to go through walls if I believe in what I'm doing. I've been doing it since I was mm -hmm. a young bull. Like I, I play sports, you know, you play sports. We wake up, we go, we grind. You know, I, I went to college and went from five to 12 on numerous days. Like I'm my physical body. I'm willing to take 
it to the to the end of exhaustion. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not tripping on that. Yeah. But what I had is to kind of switch to is preservation, like being able to keep what I do have in regards to my energy. Like I'm now making sure that I eat green foods all day. Like eat mm-hmm. berries, eat melons, um, make sure I get some type of rest throughout my day. I'm in the summer now, so I ain't gonna lie to each other. I ain't sleeping too much. Like last night was probably a cool foe. Sleep's important. Yeah, man. Sleep's important. Sleep's important, <laughs> but but it's like when you dreaming them dreams and you start seeing all of those things that you always wanted, and you feel like if I can just work my way to get there, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have that materialize in my life. Like you telling me all I gotta do is work hard. That's it. Like, I like you just saying, like, it's tangible. Like, I got steps right here. I just got to work hard and get it. Like, what I'm sleeping yeah. for? Like, why, why yeah. am I sleeping? You don't want right. success more than you want to sleep. That's what Eric Thomas said. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Bro said that. Like, yeah. if you're ET, he says that. But at the same time, yeah. with the same time, when you like that, though, you just have to understand when you're done, when you've reached your limit. And that's the maturation yeah. that I'm getting to now in regards to my strategy, which is preservation. Cause I'm not tripping mm-hmm. on going all out. Like I'm an all out brother, but the women in my life are the ones that specifically have told me, slow down, take a break. Chemist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The chemist, you know what I'm saying? I'm the mechanic. They the chemist. They cooking up the science mm-hmm. behind it. I'm over here <laughs> like, yo, I'm getting this done. But they're right. like, hold up, hold up. You know? So that's kind of been my strategy is the nutrition, the rest, and then my network, you know, that's been big for me. Yeah. That's been big for me. Network is definitely major, but your nutrition and health is extremely important. You have to take care of your of your body, health as well, right? And I'm a strong believer that you take care of your body, your body will take care of your mind, and you are solid at the end of the day. Um, I am like 35 plus days vegan. So um, oh, I do straight oh, vegan oh. and vegetarian food. Oh, um, okay. And it helps me like mentally, like I love eating plant-based products. Um, some things I still eat. I love cheese and eggs. So and came to that part of town yet, but like, I don't eat pork. I haven't eaten pork and I don't know, like. But you're still vegan though. Not cheese. Yeah, ain't, yeah. Cheese, ain't vegan cheese is still dairy. Cheese and eggs are um, okay. technically. So I'm like, I, I don't care. I still call myself vegan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a vegan yeah, yeah. lifestyle, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's important, though, because um, every time I wanted to do this, I was I would do it for, like, a few days, and I start to eat and meat again. And now I've been on this journey. Um, at first, it was just raw fruits and vegetables for, like, two weeks, and then I went into my veganism. Um, but it is important, and also your network, like you said. But <clears throat> the people you keep around you are the most important. You should not be the smartest person in the room or in your group chat whatever um you have to have people who are more successful than you like one of my mentors told me you should have a mentor and a mentee you should always stay in the mental in the middle so that you are always growing Ooh. so you have a mentor and you have a mentee um and that's really important and again that, that's your circle because me and my best friend Shanice for example every single day 12 o'clock there's an alarm for accountability she texts me, I text her, how's network trading going? She'll say, hey, you work out today, you eat breakfast, how's your morning going? And we do that every single day. And that's holding that accountability. So yeah, shout out, to, shout out to Shanice, shout out to Shanice. Yeah, shout out to, shout out to Bessie. But, but like, yeah, you right. Like that's that right there, that veganism that you practicing right now. I think every single person on this planet that wants more out of their life has to take their nutrition seriously. Have to. It's like when I started to really focus on my nutrition, that was when I think I became so much more successful at every single thing I did. Like every everything yeah. I started to be like, you know, cause I, like I said, you know, being an athlete, you know, you think that's you being good when you in shape, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm in shape. Mm-hmm. I'm hooping every day. I'm playing football. I'm working out. Da, 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 da. I'm good. Like I look good. But you drink a sodas, you eat water burger all the time, you know. Cheeseburgers. Yeah, yeah. Cheeseburger chicken. You know, we love that fried chicken. We love that bacon. We eating all of that. Yeah. And then all the swine. Man, but it's ooh, all the swine. <laughs> all the swine. And then it makes up the brain, though. I feel like it makes up the way you think, though. It makes you tired. It does. Lethargic. Like you be just like, you want to work, but you just like, oh man, I'm tired. Like I ain't, I'm just, but when you not eating that way consistently. And you get to like yeah. the more healthy type of foods. I feel like it makes your brain like feel weightless. Like I don't know, I don't know if you yeah. can to that, but it feels like you just have 
the chains lifted from your brain so you can have ideas flowing and you sleep better, which I, I mean, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I don't sleep like that, but I heard you sleep better, but you know what I'm saying? Supposedly better. Allegedly you sleep better, but melatonin is supposed to help with that. But, um, no. But you don't need to do that. There's fruits for that. You know what I mean? Like there are super fruits. You have a sire, you have blueberries. Um, I did an experiment. I did a water fast for seven days. I ate no food. I just drank straight, just only water, water with lemons if I got hungry. And then I went to the sauna to work out. A water fast. Day one, horrible. Like I wanted pizza, spaghetti, like I wanted everything. Day two was like, okay, but I got headaches. When I got past day three, my level of clarity about who I am as a person, my purpose oh. in this world, my connection with God, my religion, like everything got a lot more clear to me and then it allowed me to enter into my veganism so the what you you are what you eat and if you're eating a lot of fatty foods and consuming a lot of alcohol and things like that like it does play a role in your mental so yeah they said, on that you got to eat healthy see that's, that's what i'm saying because when it empties out like when you're done and you have no food in there it's like everything at the bottom of you starts to come up it's like it's like mm-hmm. man like okay let's find out where am i going to pull my nutrients where am I gonna put my strength from? I'm gonna put my yeah. strength from my spirit, from my mind, from the from the muscles. Like I'm literally trying to find out what's in it. Like what is in here that I can eat? Like dog, that's people gotta understand that fasting is so important. Fasting is so fasting important. Fasting is important. Oh uh, man, I started fasting on Thursdays uh, last year, La- or not last year, but last school year. Like so, like January through. Meg, I started fasting on Thursdays, and exactly what you're talking about is how I started feeling. Like on Thursday, mm-hmm. whew, I, I wake up, you know, saying, "No, I'm just drinking water." And then as the day will go on, I, I'm, a couple of days I slipped up, you know, what I'm saying I grab like a little cracker. <laughs> I try to start biting the cracker, I spit it out. I did that the first time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You gotta spit it out. I put a peppermint in it, threw it out. <laughs> you forgetting? Yeah. But that's the discipline, though, because you discipline yourself. Yeah. People don't understand when you discipline yourself, you tell yourself that I am important. I value nice. myself. Yeah. When you make that decision to start telling yourself on a consistent basis, no, no, no. It'd be like, yo, your body start to be like, well, this guy or this girl runs this body. Like, I don't run mm-hmm. this body. Like, like, my, this stomach don't run this body. This, these feet don't run this body. This mind yeah. don't run this body. Like, this, whoever is in there is running this whole situation. So then, boom, Thursday, you get to the end. I get to the end of my day, and then, like, work i will be working dog because like i would be like i'm hungry i'm hungry for success. but did working help you though it kept you busy right yes okay. yes yeah. it kept, so it, it kept my mind that. off it mm-hmm. yeah it kept my mind or, or like my daughter we'll be hanging out i'll be playing we'll be chilling or i'm helping her homework i'm like girl you don't know this is bop, 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 bop. i'm like over here helping her. <laughs> hey, glad you want so it i'm like yeah i know you know what i'm saying depleted yeah depleted yeah. so all right Next. what's the longest amount of days you went on a fast just random random question. Hey, two. Two. two two i'm gonna challenge you one day to do three and we'll rehab this conversation about what you said does. you said you did the seven day fast with the water though you got me feeling like i'm i'm a punk though now you're, you're testing. a lot of people can't do it but i'm telling you like i know people that do it i know people that do it once a month for real you just gotta make sure you take vitamins Right, because you are you want to make sure you're getting the proper nutrition so you don't pass out. But um, see, I, I take vitamins, water. See, I water. take I, I take vitamins. Though. I take multivitamin. I take lion's mane. I take ashwagandha. You know what I'm saying? I take a, a couple of you know what I'm green superfood. I, so can yeah. I drink that? Can I drink like a, a shake, like a greens no. shake? I can't drink that. Ooh, just water. Just only water. Only water. When you get hungry, you can you can squeeze some lemons in the water. Um, All right. But yeah, we'll we'll have a challenge one day. Maybe we'll yeah, we can challenge we, out of it and go for a podcast and do it. No, nah, 100. We could do that. Yeah, I'm all about that. So then, boom, talking about the challenge, man, let's go into the role of our personal growth. Um, yeah. How that plays into specifically, man, talking about loving yourself. Um, you know, how, how, how are we going about that? Because I think I'm going to say now I'm an advocate for personal everything. You know what I'm saying? Personal yeah. ownership, accountability. That is the biggest issue. I told my partners uh, on the podcast <clears throat> yesterday. That is the biggest issue that we have as people on this planet, or one of the, the leading causes of the biggest issues. It's no personal accountability, no personal love, like no personal. It's, it's like you get outside of yourself and you start saying it's because of them. 
it's because of this person, it's because of my wife, mm -hmm. it's because of my son, you know, but when you yeah. go back to the side, like how does that play a role in our growth as people? By loving yourself. Yeah, I think self-care mm -hmm. and self-love are the most important thing to everybody. Um, I'm a huge woman empowerment advocate, as I said before, and I advocate all the time. I make reels on my social media on Instagram. I will tell my partner, hey, I need a self-care weekend. I will book me an Airbnb that has a huge pool, a huge tub, make me some wine, lay in the tub, go to bed, and I have, and that's my self-care. You know, it just depends on what I feel like doing. Um, my personal growth that really helped me um so a lot of people don't know i was in a relationship for um, about five years and one day I ended up in an argument ex cheating you know mechanics <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> mechanical it's mechanical and uh he ended up it ended up turning really bad um so the aspect of choking and throwing me around and it, it became this, it's this domestic violence situation which is really random and weird because he's never raised his voice or hit me or whatever right it was a this this situation and and it really mentally messed me up like i got a little dark a little depressed and then one day i told myself you can either a keep me in dark and depressed or you can make a change you can figure yeah. out something so i went on this journey i called it my own self-care my own self-love journey i got away from social media um i woke up early every morning sat on my balcony sipped tea um, read a motivational book. I journaled my emotions every day. I went to work and I worked until nighttime. I got home at night and instead of drinking or going out, I went to the gym. I took my anger on that treadmill and on those weights. That's right. And I did that for about three to four weeks. And I learned and discovered so much about myself. And I fell in love with myself um, for the first time where I truly felt like I knew myself. And uh, that situation just reminded me like how powerful I am as a black woman, how powerful I am as a queen, period, right? And um, that was the beginning of my self-care and my self-love journey. And so I speak this to women like you are enough, you are perfect, right? You have to love yourself because if you do not love yourself, nobody else will love you properly. You have to know, you have to go into that relationship knowing your worth whether that's a partner, your friends, family, whatever it is. So, um, and that's for males and females too, for both sides. But you, you know, you are worthy for whatever life you want. Self-love and self-care is the most important, most important thing that I think everybody should practice and not just healthy eating and working out. Yeah. I got my homeboy on the self-care. Now he texts me every two to three weeks. He getting his uh, pedicure. <laughs> Hey. The, the salon, he's like self-care day check me yeah. out that's what I'm talking about. man that's next level that's the next level for me i think that the pedicures is definitely where i need to be moving forward man i i, I just haven't it's you know something it's, nostalgic about just sitting there with the whatever they give you and also water and just relaxing it's, it's important especially for us as adults we need to just relax especially black african-americans yeah yeah. Our number one killer is stress. Stress. You pressure. stress so much, you get high blood pressure. Your organs start failing. You kidney, diabetes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everything. It's a domino effect. So you definitely gotta do some self care. Yeah. Be okay with investing in that self care. You know. Yeah, that's I true. Think yeah. That's the that's the part that has to had to change for me mentally. Is just like mm -hmm. being like, okay, I can invest time in myself. That's okay. Um, yeah. I, my whole life has been attitude, uh, gratitude, and serving, right? So like, I thought that was like, you know, my power, which is, you know, it is still, but when I serve, 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 and then again, we talk about that limit, I run out, then now who's going to refill me? Yeah, yeah. Nobody. But that's where the self-care comes in. It's exactly. like a recharge. Like, I know that I'm very much an empath. I am huge on energy and vibes yeah. to a point where my family and friends know that. And just having a conversation about your life, if you're going through something, you are sucking a piece, some of my energy out of me. Every conversation you're having with family, friends, coworkers, students, they are sucking more and more energy out of you on top of what you do every day. So it's important to take that self-care time and it's not selfish. It's you taking time for yourself. And I think another thing too, so then like, boom, you're talking about the relationships, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, relationship people, we love to be like talking to everybody, making sure everybody good. But then mm -hmm. when you are those people, I think it's important that you take the time to listen, right? Don't always go into situations trying to give something to the situation. 
observe and listen because you might be filled by something that's negative. Like, for example, mm-hmm. I got negative mentors. Like you said, somebody, somebody told you to be have a mentor and a mentee. I had yeah. negative mentors. I don't know if I have a negative mentee. I'm, I'm sure I do. So somebody looking at me like, bro, you ain't doing it right. But I got another <laughs> mentor. And the reason why okay. is because that mentor fills me with knowing that I have the chance to go opposite of the direction you go on some of these decisions you make. Like mm-hmm. I'm looking at you and I, and I may like sometimes add to the situation. I'd be like, Hey, like, you know, I don't think that, you know, you may not listen, whatever. All right, cool. But I know I'm not doing that. Like that's what I'm not doing. And mentally it helps me like feel myself and say, okay, so I, I've now eliminated an option, a route that's not going to work. Like I've eliminated a route in my mind. So it fills me up because it lets me like be more clear and more concise in my decision-making. And I may have taken this a different route, but what I'm, what I'm saying this is because I am filled by the knowledge that the world gives me. Like the world mm-hmm. is my teacher. I got, I, I yeah. can be in the world, I can listen, I can observe, I can not say anything and just be filled by you guys because you guys show me good and bad things. Yeah. And it's all energy. I I read somewhere that everything is energy. Everything around you is some type of molecule. The air, those little red bins behind you, that water bottle you're holding, like you, like we are all made from energy. (laughs) Yeah, we're all made from energy. Everything is made off of some type of energy when you really think about it, when you get into the basics of it. And so you do have good energy and you do have bad energy. Um, I have a friend that they're someone's always kind of coming to them with sad or dramatic or bad things. And it got to a point where they started kind of having that mentality, like Mm -hmm. everything's just bad. And that's what happens when you don't take care of your mental. Like, Hey, I need a timeout. Like I ended up telling my family one time, I love y'all. If it's not an emergency, please let, I want to let you know, you won't hear from me for two weeks because I'm taking care of my mental, you know what I mean? You gotta take timeouts for yourself, you know, take your sabbaticals as I call them and take your sabbatical. Enjoy enjoy life, yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, I'll take a sabbatical. I will get me Airbnb in the mountains, go hiking, just connect to the world, come back and nobody even know where I was going. Just get (laughs) Nah, see my, 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 my thing is like, I like to be myself authentically. I think that's Uh something that I have always, kind of led towards like with my self-care like my self-care has been tied directly towards being my true authentic self because not being that is draining right so you yeah. want to talk about a draining experience it's putting yeah. on a facade for people that don't really care nothing about you like it's like trying to like dress a certain way to make everybody comfortable or it's like not saying that inappropriate joke that you know what i'm saying i don't want to say because yeah. i know you know what i mean i'm done mm-hmm. like i'm at this point now in my life hey look if you don't want to be cool with me because it's cool. You don't want to buy from me because it's cool. Don't want to do the podcast? Cool. Hey, y'all going to fire me? Hey, you know what? I need this job. But I ain't tripping, though. I'm still going to say what I got to say because yeah. I have to be me because I'm, yeah. I guess, I heard this statement before. I'm more me when I'm me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm mm. more, I, I can give you so much more when I'm That's authentically sweet. myself. Like, I'm naked. I'm, I'm fully me. Like, so whatever mm-hmm. comes with this experience or this product or whatever it is you have going on with me, it's going to be real. It's going to be times 10 because I'm being myself now. When I'm not, yeah. though, you're getting a minimal, you know, you're getting just a whatever. Like, cause I'm And not- I think people who are on, people who are on that frequency of like energy and vibes, which is a lot of people, <clears throat> they can feel that when someone's being genuinely themselves, right? Being authentic. Um, and I think that's another part why I was miserable in my last job because I had to completely cover up. Like I was a whole monk out, out there, you know what I mean? Like I was just like, okay, that's a little dramatic, but <laughs> you know, you, 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 I just try to be careful. I was in corporate America climbing the ladder. And, um, as a woman who has, who's a little thicker than others, right. That's things that people pay for. You know, you try to find that balance of covering yourself a little bit more than a normal woman because you don't want to come off any type of way in this corporate world. And I had the hugest struggle with that, with trying to find that balance. And honestly, towards the end, I just didn't care no more. I was like, you know what? I'm going to wear my jeans. I'm going to wear my jeans and my shirt and my vans. I don't care. (laughs) You know what I mean? But that's a lot of things. A lot of people actually challenge themselves with that. Like, that's hard for a lot of people to have that balance to be their true, authentic selves. 
And a lot of it sometimes is family and friends. They don't want to exactly. be themselves because being judged by the people that they love the most at the same time. Exactly. Societal pressure. Society is a mug. Like society Ooh. will take its foot and put it on your neck and you'll yeah. be down there dying and you, you don't understand that the all you have to do sometimes is just really use your own brain and say, okay, to me, what makes sense? Like, because yeah. we're such natural pack animals that we'll rock with whatever the group is rocking with at the detriment of us, because if everybody's doing it, it's gotta make sense. Like- I hate that. I hate that we do that. It's just, it's just, it's just us though. We are, that's, it's, a, it's a survival thing though. You gotta think about yeah. it. Even back in the day, like, you know, when we was at the party, everybody in there jigging, getting it, pop, pop, or, or not, we everybody start running, we running. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, you gotta put yourself like you know, it's there's certain things that it works for, but I think when you come to like preserving yourself, loving yourself, doing what you gotta do, you gotta make sure you're using your brain. Like use your brain. I always take that the time to practice the pause. A good friend taught mm-hmm. me that. I practice. Ooh, yeah. Like the pause, the pause is great. The pause is great. Cause what it says yeah. is is okay. Let me let me analyze this situation myself. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go ahead and get away from y'all because y'all got a lot going on. Or maybe I have nothing going on. I'm going to just distance myself for a moment. That moment yes. is the most powerful moment you'll ever have up until this point in your life because now you're recognizing that you're making a decision. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's, yeah, that's-, that, that's so true. I think the other thing that just came to mind too is um, we talk about nutrition mm-hmm. not just nutrition that you eat but the nutrition of the content that you're intaking every day too has a lot to do with your self-care like on my self-care journey when I do take that monthly um I'm careful with the music I listen to don't get me wrong I love Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion and Houston you know what I mean Houston rap music but sometimes I have a certain genre of music that I do listen to when I need a little bit more self-care, some more self-love. I listen to my Erica Badu, my Jill Scott. Mm. So I kind of take it to that R&B. And that goes for social media. Like sometimes you got to unfollow the Shade Room and Baller Alert and follow more <laughs> entrepreneurs and follow yeah. more people that are in the same business or people that motivate you. Yeah. Um, and, and that helps a lot too with your self-care. Yeah, you got to match yourself with the frequency in which you want to live on. Like when you... Right. When you- when you're not in that space or you're not constantly around it, then you distance yourself from it. And like mm-hmm. I, I was listening to a Myron Golden. You know who Myron Golden is? No, I don't think I know who that is. So he's like a uh, like a business for, uh, consultant. And okay. his, his idea is, is that everything that we do needs to be acted upon outside of us. Now, what's outside of us doesn't have to dictate what we do. But if we are trying to continue an action or continue a move, or we're trying to take um, our life a certain direction, we have to have things outside of us that support that that action mm-hmm. or support that that thing. You know what I'm saying? That verb, whatever yeah. that, that we're trying to do. You need like if you're trying to be more spiritual, you probably would benefit from being around you know people that are more so in that space, listening to more of that type of uh, information, affirmations, uh, yeah. symbols in your home that represent what you believe you know mm-hmm. um it's important to kind of understand how the mind works too because when yeah. you really understand you know conscious and subconscious conscious being the active working mind subconscious is most of your mind which is lying beneath the surface that is internal a lot of people don't understand a lot of people yeah. don't understand that subconscious yeah. mind is quite powerful yeah it's, it's, powerful. it's working for you when you're not working like you literally sleep and it's still working and people don't understand that that's mm-hmm. the 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 thoughts, the feelings, the insecurities, the doubts, the, the super confidence, the ego, all of that. So you have to feed it unintentionally sometimes and intentionally. Like you got to keep things around when you're not motivated. Like we're talking about having drive and sustaining drive and motivation and being lions, but lions sleep 10 hours a day, they say. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to be. Yeah. So if you sleep that much or when you're supposed to be resting and recovering, you have to have things at work already that you put into your vessel that you already did that work. You you set those seeds so that when you wake up, they're budding. You know what I'm saying? Mm, and then you water yeah. it. And then you water it and then you keep growing and you just continue that process. Cause if you don't keep watering your plant, it's gonna die. It like, will. It will. That's beautiful. I, I remember um someone told me back when I was like 
I think 2021, one of my managers told me, um, successful people make money in their sleep. If you can find ways to make money in your sleep, you will be highly successful. That's right. Because you got to rest. You got to rest, which is why even you, you need to find a way to get you some rest. You got to. It's a team, though. And and, and that's, that's the part of me that is trying to release my duties of my life to my yeah. people around me. I think, you know, when you a grow tribe. up, yeah, when you grow up and you always, my, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, this is mine, that's mine, this is mine, this is mine, I got this, I can control this. It's like you have to let yeah. go of control, right? I, that's I, hard. It's hard. That's hard to do. Yeah. And we're praying over it, we're drinking water, we try to take care of our nutrition, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think once I get there, it. you know what I'm saying? We're trying to manifest it, but as, as time goes on, I think that'll get better and better for me. But when you have so much energy as a young man or a young woman, sometimes you feel like, why I got this energy for? I'm supposed to be grinding. Like, I, as, yeah. at some point, I want to lay up. I'm trying to be retired and have nothing to worry about versus being retired and saying, oh, I'm going to live off half my check. It, 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 oh, oh, snap. Inflation at 8%. I'm going to live off half my check back then? <laughs> like, come on, bro. Not not going to do that, bro. Like, I'm not going to play with y'all. Not playing with yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? That's so all I'm saying is that's for me, that's my walk. Like that's one of my things. I I'm, I'm very vulnerable with my audience. Like everybody know my weakness start. They hey <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> is what it is. But uh let's uh pivot a little bit before I start telling too much. Um <laughs> who or what has framed, you know what I'm saying, your ideology now? Because you know, right now, you know, you're in a you're in a, a space. Where you know you're an entrepreneur now, you're a full-time entrepreneur. Um, you are yes. I guess they classify this generation of entrepreneurs as the uh what they call a uh, pandemic uh what do they call them? I don't think I know what you're trying to say. I don't know. I don't you know what I'm trying to say? What what they call us? What do they call us? Pandemic uh, what? Pandemic entrepreneurs, I don't know what they call it. They, they got a name for it. It's like a, a trendy name. You look it up. But basically, there were so many up, yeah. entrepreneurs that were birthed in the pandemic because, and you kind of a little bit afterwards, but because of, you know, they was giving out that money, you know, sleepy oh, loans. PPP loans and everything. Yeah, PPP <laughs> loans, all that. Like the, the pandemic really, PPP babies, you know what I'm saying? So you kind of, oh, some you into that as when it's all said and done. But what kind of, you know, your ideology is a little different though. Because I know some entrepreneurs that's not really working on their business like that. They started a business, they're not doing nothing with it. Uh, they have no real drive. They have no real core values. Um, you got some core values behind why you're doing what you're doing. It has purpose. It has yeah. Meaning. So what's what's frame that? You know, you spoke a little bit on that, but how how can you dig a little bit <laughs> and break that down? I think my um, foundation of my ideology really came from my family. Um, my mom and grandma they're they're well known in Colleen for doing hair. Um, seeing them from a young age just grind and do hair shows and. I mean, doing it all um, really kind of showed me that that ambition of, a, of another woman, like really striving and pushing. Yeah. Um, and I think that really pushed me at an early age also to want to be a business owner. I knew when I was 10 that I wanted to own some type of business. I don't know what it was, but I, knew I wanted some type of business and to be successful because seeing my mom and grandma do it inspired me. Yeah. Um, my grandma has been doing hair for 30 plus years in Colleen and my mom's been doing hair for about 15 plus years in Colleen. So, you know, and they have a great clientele and they're well known. Like I'll go, I'll be in Colleen and I go to H-E-B and I'm like, oh, you're Kiwana's daughter. Oh, you're Denise's granddaughter. I, I have no idea who these people are. And I just be like, yeah, hey, how you doing? You know what I mean? Just yeah. kind of talking. Um, and then also I would say my dad, um, he served in the army and we were able to travel like everywhere but majority of my childhood was in Germany and Italy and life is just so different outside the United States and it opened up my eyes at a young age of traveling and the idea that the the world is really this huge place it's so much bigger than just Travis County and Bell County and Colleen you know Um, and you can have these huge goals you know and and do whatever you really want to do my dad has this nickname for me called baby doll Oh. So, I know I'm telling too much. <laughs> he calls me baby doll, and uh, it's the cutest thing. And he he used to call my brother Duke, and he would call us these names because he wanted us to feel like we had power in the world. 
Um, I didn't know this until like two months ago why he gave us these nicknames. He told us, he's like, I wanted you to know since you were little that you have power. You are a queen. He is a prince, a king. You know what I mean? You guys can do whatever you want to do. And I think having that foundation for my family is what really helps me with my ideology. Like I knew immediately how I should be loved, how I should be treating myself. I see my mom and dad have this beautiful marriage. So I seen how I wanted a partner to treat me. I seen my mom and grandma run businesses. I've seen how an entrepreneur should be moving, right? Um, my dad gave us the ability to travel. The ent- I mean, I went to Italy, Croatia, like you name it. We went there to places where people dream of going. So for me, I think it's really my foundation of my family and my childhood that helps me with the, my ideology. Mm, so I, I like you saying about your parents too, you know, with the, the, the exhibition of who they were as people and in their union, the beauty in their yeah. union helps help build who you are today. And I think that's that's powerful for me to hear as a as a parent because you know I got I got a nine year old and I always constantly think about the example that I'm setting for her so that you know it does turn into a product where when she gets into this world she feels secure, safe, understood, and powerful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, and I, I think it, that's important, man. I, that's why I love what you're doing with uh, all of the things you're doing in regards to women empowerment because I Thank know you. this is going to be the thing or these are going to be the things where people are doing this type of stuff that my daughter is going to be having the opportunity to step within. You know what I mean? Like you, that you paid the paving that way for her. So shout yeah. out. And um, when you're talking about like, you know, ideologies, I feel like it's, it's so critical that people really are open and honest with themselves and open with the world. Right. Like letting, mm-hmm. letting things impact you in a way that kind of shape your understanding of the world and not get hardened by it. You know, like there's so much that happens that's negative and positive in this world to you. But your frame of reference is very important and how that ends up taking course in your life. So it's like you saying, like, I haven't been out. Yeah, I agree. Go ahead. I agree. I'm not bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to say I agree with that completely. And I think that's why it's also important for people, especially black people, to understand that uh, therapy is okay. Um, because a lot of people, whether it's how you were raised or in your ways, you have a certain frame of thinking. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we have to go to a therapist and, or we now call them, um, self coaches, yeah, yeah. Co- care coaches. Now, mm-hmm. um, there's this I- ideology that like, you have a problem if you go to, you know, go to someone, but you don't like, you have to understand like your brain is built very powerful. And if you have that one train thinking, you don't know how much you're missing in the world not being able to open that other side of perspective, you know, perspective. So just to kind of touch on, you know, what you said a little bit. Yeah. Popping the cap off of some of those limits. It, it'll mm-hmm. affect your life in so much uh, different ways that it, it'll blow your mind. You know what I'm saying? Like when I had a therapist uh, last two years ago is one of the, probably the most productive times in my life. Like I was, I was doing everything I wanted to do. Um, I didn't notice it at the time until, cause she had to discontinue her services with me because I guess she relocated or something. I was hurt. I was upset. So I was like, man, mm-hmm. I'm doing so good. So now I, I didn't want to just go and divulge that same type of information to somebody else. But like, yeah. I was the rose, and like I tell everybody, therapy is real. Like therapy is definitely the key to unlocking so many things in your life. There's so many things you shove down into the cellars of your, of your, of your mind but they are at work still. Like we talked about that subconscious mind. They still subconscious, pull, yeah. They still pulling strings out here. Like you can see it. Like if you if you really took yourself out of your own body and looked at your whole life in its entirety, you can see everything that's under the surface working in different areas. And other people see it too, but sometimes they won't tell you nothing or sometimes they mm-hmm. make excuses for you depending on how good or bad you are at what you do, all that stuff. So I, I just, I think ideology, you know what I'm saying, is for me, it's been like, just being open, seeing the world for what it is and seeing myself for who I am and understanding that, you know, the way I was raised, it, it was it was what it was. It may, I don't mm-hmm. think it was good or bad. It was what it was. And I love my family. I love everybody, you know what I'm saying? But my the way I was raised has shaped me to be a man that's open now. Like now I allow people to be people. That's why people would be like, you, why would you work with so-and-so? Like, you don't know what they be? I'd be like, look. I feel like it's okay. <laughs> Trust me, God. I done right. done some stuff that if you knew, you probably wouldn't be talking to me. You know what I'm saying? It's like we all, yeah. we all like, we all have to be able to live on this planet, coexist, understand one another, even if we don't agree with one another, 
and you know what I'm saying? Just practice empathy and, and love and learn and continue to grow. So that's why I love yeah. platforms like this. Like I love that now, like we talked about before, you off, off the record, podcasting and this being something that is something we want to get into and, and continue to do and grow with. It's the opportunity to network with people in real time and, and grow together. Why wouldn't, why isn't everybody doing this? Does it make sense to me? It right. Just, it blows my mind. Like you should be one to podcast with all of your favorite people in your space so you can learn what they're doing and do yeah, it just yourself. Get put on. Yeah. Get put on and share information with the, you know what I'm saying? Share resources. That's what the, that's what life's about. Like that's I don't know. I'm just gonna keep doing what I do. And maybe the exact that's just people again, as people's trains of thought, you know what I mean? That's why most people this is their world for most people. And this is the world for other people. You feel me? And that's why oh. we have levels. That's why you got different classes in life. You know, just people have different mindsets. So I don't fit there. That little, that little yeah. world, I don't fit in that world. I don't fit in that yeah. world. I, I gotta be, I gotta it was be. too small for me. It yeah. Too small for me. I'm, I'm at a point, I'm trying to make my own world. Like, Man, there you, <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Then rent it out. Rent it out after that. You know what I'm saying? Let somebody yeah. else live there to dip. <laughs> right. But uh, <laughs> real talk, but Sade, man, what you got from my audience, man, in regards to like, you know, what's something you would leave with everybody <clears throat> in regards to just, you know, just grow, just what, whatever message you want to leave with them, something powerful to be able to kind of give them to move forward. Um, I'm going to definitely kind of reference my last, um, the saying that I threw in my last podcast episode, which is on Apple Music and Spotify. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we are meant to thrive and not survive you were meant you weren't meant to just go your day-to-day look paycheck to paycheck just kind of just be here living like no you were meant to thrive thriving means being happy enjoying life understanding like you said life you know and so I really want to challenge everybody that is uh, watching this podcast or listening to Think about, get their journal or their notepad on their phone and think about thriving. Like, what do I need to do in my life to actually thrive instead of survive? Or just simply ask yourself, am I thriving or am I surviving? Um, because I think that'll help you kind of take a step back and look into your life. So that's what I would definitely leave with everybody. Yeah, y'all heard what she said, man. You thrive. Thrive. Yeah, we ain't surviving out here. We thriving every day. So next time when y'all tell me you're surviving, I'm going to be like, hey, you know you're thriving right now. <laughs> Oh, you driving, I'm gonna right? Be, uh, I'm going to be back in Colleen um, in July, and there is a um, mental health event that's going on that I have a, a, a workshop table at. Um, it's called Melanin and Mimosas is what it's called, but um, huge panel of amazing people, men and women, and a whole bunch of workshops about mental um, and there's going to be like 30 plus vendors. So if you're on Facebook, definitely follow me so I can share that information. Or maybe I'll show it to you so you can share it with your people. But um, those are events. Again, these are people you want to be in a room with. You want to be in a room with all these people that have something to say that's going to help you with your mental. So That's a fact. Y'all better take care of your mental health, man. We don't need no more of these crazy situations. No more baby mama, baby daddy drama. Get that figured out, mm-hmm. y'all. Let's get that figured out. Let's get that figured out. Let's get all this... <laughs> I just mess figured out, but Shade, I appreciate you bringing this value to the platform. Um, Absolutely, thank you for having me. I appreciate it always. Yeah, yeah you already know, man. So that's that's two. That's two now. That's two off. Ah oh, man. You know what I was messing with you. I'm messing with you. Divine timing. Divine timing. But um. Divine timing. Yeah. But everybody, this has been the Light Leadership Series, uh, and this is uh, Shadi Valentine, your boy K Sloan, and we out.